my name's Shirley Lawson and I work at Call Scotland. We're based at Edinburgh University. Well, we were based at Edinburgh University and we do hope to go back, but currently we're all working at home. We specialise in assistive technology for pupils with additional support needs. And this is our website here. Some of you may be familiar with it. We have a wide range of information on our website to support learners with dyslexia. If you click through on our information tab, that's where you would find the section dedicated to technologies to support people with literacy difficulties. We provide a lot of training and support for teachers who are supporting dyslexic learners. We show them how inclusive digital technologies can be absolutely game changing for somebody who has reading and writing difficulties. And we've seen it all too often when someone with dyslexia is not given the right support then they lose their confidence and their self-esteem is low. But knowing what technology can be implemented to support their learning challenges can increase the ability to work independently and to raise attainment. And people often ask us, what are the best apps to help my dyslexia? Well, these days, most devices have built in accessibility features and many people with dyslexia can get all the support they need from a laptop or a tablet or a phone without having to use additional apps or software. In this relatively short workshop session, I'm going to focus on the built in features of a Windows laptop and of an iPad that can support somebody with dyslexia and also look at some free online learning tools. And as a follow up to this session, I will also provide information and resources on using Chromebooks, Macs and Android tablets, as there are a wide range of devices out there and each has their own accessibility features. These are the main areas of difficulty a person with dyslexia has. And this is what we're going to focus on today when it comes to matching up assistive technologies to support these difficulties. OK, let's start with the first one, reading. And I'm going to start with using my Windows laptop. Let's imagine you're an upper primary pupil and your class is doing a project on the Romans. Your teacher has asked you to do some research on the web, but you find reading difficult. The school laptops are all Windows devices and you switch it on with intrepidation, knowing that unless you're going to be paired up with someone who's a better reader than you, you're not going to get this task done. And if you're given that help from another classmate, what does that do to your self-confidence and belief that you can work independently? Well, not much. But help is at hand and it's just a matter of being shown what is possible. So here is the website that the teacher has suggested looking at. And I'm using the new Microsoft Edge browser. For someone with dyslexia, this web page may appear quite cluttered with sidebars and images and floating text boxes. All these things make the reading experience more difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the web address bar up here and I'm going to click on the little book icon with the speaker and in, in, enter into what's called immersive reader. So now the web page looks like this much clearer interface, less distractions, and it immediately feels better. Going back up to the top of the page, I'm going to click on text preferences, and I'm going to decide I'd like to have the text just a little bit bigger there. So I'm just sliding it along there. So now it looks better, but how can I get support to have the words read aloud? Well, just clicking on the read aloud, first icon there, that will activate text to speech. The Romans in Britain. The Romans came to Britain nearly 2000 years ago and changed our country. Even today, evidence of the Romans being here can be seen in the ruins of Roman buildings, forts, roads, and baths can be found all over Britain. Text to speech, which highlights the words as they're being read out is the best kind of support you can get. It's called dual modality, and it means that you're using both your sight and hearing. And this can really help the learner process the meaning of the text. So that just at the top there, we've got the play and pause. It's really easy to use. And I can work at the pace I need to work at. I can also change the voice here under voice options at the top right hand side. 
Currently, that one was the Microsoft Mia voice, but you can see all the different choices that you have there. And you can change the speed as well. Both these elements should be carefully considered because if the learner doesn't like the voice, they may choose not to use it when actually they do need to. What a fantastic support this text-to-speech provides. And if the learner is using it in the classroom, we would recommend that they have the option of wearing headphones so that nobody needs to know whether they're using this assistive feature. And it can really be the small things that make the difference. No matter how good the technology is, if the user refuses to use it, then we're back to square one. So let's go back to the top of the page there, and I'm just going to show you the text preferences that we have. Let's go back to text preferences, where I originally made the text bigger. For some people with dyslexia, increasing the text spacing can improve reading fluency. So that's the text spacing off. We'll have a look at some of the text down here. And let's see the difference when I'm putting a text spacing on. Yes, so you can see a noticeable difference there. And for some people, people it can make improve the reading fluency. I can change the page theme here, choose a different background colour, because remembering that the worst combination is black text on a white background, which can cause visual stress. So let's change it to yellow here. Under grammar tools, I can split the words into syllables, which again, for some, not everyone, but it can make the reading and decoding of words easier. Let's switch that one on. So that's the word split up into syllables now. And teachers always like this grammar tool option here, of being able to colour code different parts of speech with a click of the button. So let's put the nouns into purple. And let's go for the adjectives into green there. OK, so with the yellow background, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but I know I can change my background there. So if we put it into black, you'll absolutely see the difference there. So that's all under grammar tools. I'll change the background back again and switch off the parts of speech under grammar tools. In reading preferences, you can switch on line focus. So that's the line focus there. So it helps to focus while reading by highlighting either one three or five lines and this can be really useful for someone with dyslexia whose eyes can drift from the line they're reading to the one above or the one below. So if I click on read aloud now you can see how the line focus works. The Romans in Britain. The Romans in Britain. The Romans came to Britain nearly 2,000 years ago and changed our country. So that was with three lines. If it was, I just want the single line, I'm narrowing it down there. So just a reminder that this is all possible because I'm using the Microsoft Edge browser. If you're using the Chrome browser, then you would be able to use text-to-speech apps or extensions to do the same job. But what if your teacher now gives you a PDF or a Word document to read? You can't use the Edge browser tools that I've just shown you. Um, are you going to go back to struggling to read the text? No, you can just use another multi-purpose text-to-speech application, such as the one I'm going to show you called Natural Reader. I'm going to bring Natural Re Reader up here. It sits like a little toolbar and sits there with anything that's on your screen. So let's bring up a PDF document and I'll show you how that one works. OK, so here we are. We're still on the topic of the Romans and I've now got a PDF here. So my toolbar, natural reader toolbar is sitting there and all I have to do is simply highlight some text in the PDF and click on play. To understand that, the Romans built an empire. 
and it reads it out really nicely. This is the excellent Scottish female voice called Heather. The Scottish voices consist of adult voices, Heather and Stuart. There's now teenage voices, Callum and Isla, and children's voices too, Andrew and Mary. Oh, and there's also Katie uh, for any Gaelic speakers. And they're free for anyone in the Scottish public sector and should be on all Scottish school computers. I'll show you where you'll find that on our website uh, once I've just read out another sentence here. Highlight the text, press on. The from. Romans were an ancient, the Romans civilization. Were an ancient civilization. OK, so I'm now toggling to our website and you'll see here that we have in all the information about the Scottish voices at the top tab there. There's all the different voices I was explaining and the one that I was having read out there was Heather, the female adult voice. On the natural reader toolbar, you have the option to change the voice under settings. So I'm just clicking on the settings cog here and you can see that you've got all your drop down list of voices there. So the good thing about natural reader is that it will sit on the screen with no matter what application you've got. So if you've got a web page open or a Word document or a PDF, your natural reader toolbar will sit there until you switch it off. So any text that you can highlight, you can have that read out to you. So we always encourage a teacher who's using an interactive whiteboard to switch on a text to speech app such as natural reader and have it visible on the board at all times. So that when you're doing maybe a class activity and there's a word on the board that's difficult to read, the teacher can model to the whole class how to get that support to read the word. Let's, there's no trouble, no, no, no need to struggle decoding it. We can highlight it and we can have it read out. So in this way, it's much easier for dyslexic pupils to use the tool when they're working independently. And you'll probably find that it will help many other pupils too. It's really what we call an inclusive digital technology. So for high school pupils, they can use natural reader for reading questions on a digital exam paper. This would negate the need for a human reader and the dyslexic pupil can now listen to the question as many times as they need to fully understand it. Let's give an example of this with a National 5 environmental science paper. OK, so I'm just going to scroll down to a question in this digital exam paper. Here we go. And just want to highlight the question and click on the play arrow on the natural reader to In Scotland's Caledonian forest, a variety of birds, including the chaffinch, siskin, and the Scottish crossbill, are found. And the question is read out there. So a very simple tool that can be really useful for students that are doing SQA examinations or assessments. A dyslexic learner may be described as print disabled. Giving them paper-based resources could be a barrier to their learning unless they have perhaps a reader pen or, or a scanning app on a phone or tablet. And I'm going to demo this when we move on to look at the iPad. But ideally, all curricular resources should be provided to these pupils in a digital format so they're able to use text-to-speech, such as the natural reader I've demonstrated. And this gives them the support in reading the text out. Now, there's a couple of good places to look for accessible texts. I'm just going to click back to the Call Scotland website here. I'll just minimise the natural reader toolbar. Books for All is Call Scotland's database of texts which teachers can download for their pupils to be used on computers or tablets or phones. So this is the Books for All site here. I think it's important to mention at this point that these texts really can be only downloaded for a print disabled pupil and can't be downloaded and shared with the whole class. This would be against the copyright regulations. So free to sign up, teachers can work out which texts they're looking for for their pupils uh, with a print disability and they can download them for he from here. And if the book you're not looking for 
if the book that you're looking for is not in the Books for All database, try the RNIB Bookshare UK, which is a free to join database. And I think that's now got over 300,000 titles. So well worth having a look at that. One of the best things about lockdown and pupils working at home has been the requirement for teachers to share more resources digitally. And hopefully the learners at home know all about how to get reading support via a text to speech app if they require it. And on our website, the Call Scotland website, under our information tab, scroll down here under the technology se section here, clicking on text to speech. So that's what we've been looking at using the Edge browser and the read aloud function, and then the natural reader toolbar for text to speech. So if I just scroll down here, you will see lots of different options there, depending which device you're using and depending on which application. So well worth having a look at that there. Many schools and offices are using Office 365 now for their productivity tools and there's, there are many advantages for dyslexic people in using these cloud-based applications. Firstly, there's a seamless way of working from school to home or office to home as the files can be accessed on any device from anywhere. So there's no need to copy files to save to a pen drive or email them to yourself, which can be a nightmare for you if you have organisational difficulties. So all the Office 365 files are in one place and they automatically update. So each version is the latest version. So And there's some very good assistive tools within Office 365 to support reading and writing difficulties. So I'm just going to go into a Word document here. We'll keep on the Roman theme. So this is actually a Word online document. And it's one of the many apps that's available within Office 365. If I just go up to the left hand side here, you've got these nine squares. If I click on the nine squares, just whirring around, it's requiring an internet connection. So if there's any delay there, that's why I seem to have this uh, whirling around there, but that should sort itself out. Yep. And now I can see all the different apps that are available within Office 365. So as I say, I'm currently in this one. It's a Word online document. How would I have it read out to me? That's the bit that we've decided is really useful if we know how that can happen. Well, in the same way as using the Edge browser with the web page, I can use Immersive Reader. So within this document, I click on View. And here's my immersive reader option here. So let's just click on that just now. So it's, again, put it into a nice clear interface there. Okay, it was in a Word Online document and you didn't have the same sidebars or images that you had on the web page, but it's still a nice, a nice look and feel about it. And all I have to do is click on the play button at the bottom to have the text read aloud. Roman dinner time. Before the Romans became a huge empire and conquered most of Europe, they used to eat very, very differently, differently to the way, to the way they, they did when they, when became, they became rich. rich. To the right of the play arrow, I have got the voice settings here, so I can change the speed and I can change female and male here, but within the settings of the computer, I could actually change the voice there. Up on the right hand side here, again, we've got our text preferences and our grammar options. They're almost identical to the tools offered within the Edge browser. If you look at the text preferences here, this is where you change your text size, increase the spacing, which we had decided for some dyslexic learners, this made it easier to read. And you've got the chance to change different fonts here and the themes, the different background colours. Let's go for the yellow again. That's my preference. The grammar options. 
Again, we can change, we can split it into syllables and we can change the different parts of speech here. We can toggle them on. The one noticeable difference is the picture dictionary option here. So under reading preferences, we have got, again, we've got the line focus, but we have this new one called picture dictionary. So when it's toggled on, you can click on a word in the document and get symbol support. So let's click on vegetables. And you've got this picture support. So yes, I can listen to the word read out. Vegetables. It will read it out to me and I've got the symbol support there. So this could be really useful for lots of different learners and especially for, for ones with reading and writing difficulties and just needing that extra level of support. So let's move on from thinking about reading support to think about writing support. So I'm often asked, is there not a way that we can just, the people can talk and the words appear on the screen? Well, yes, there is. And it's called using speech recognition. And there's many free options for this now. And there's word, there's one in Word Online, which I'm going to show you just now. So let's start a new document here. So I'm just using my Windows laptop here. I'm using the inbuilt microphone or could have a headset on. Either way, as long as you've got some, some input there. And I'm now going to show you how to use the dictate feature which is inbuilt in the in word online uh, to see if it can pick up my voice and instead of me word processing or some typing i'm just going to speak and the words will appear on the screen here so let's make the text a little bit bigger so that we can see that clearly OK, so we're looking along to the right hand side of the toolbar here and you can see the microphone option there. So if I click down on that there. Let's see what our options are. Either dictate or transcribe. So it's actually the dictate one we are going to do. So all I have to do is click on that and start speaking. Put my cursor in the document, click on the microphone to dictate. I am going to demonstrate how I can use my voice to dictate all the thoughts in my head, full stop. I usually end up writing not very much because I get apprehensive about making spelling mistakes, full stop. OK, so that's me speaking. I'm having to add in my own punctuation. Um, I'm now thinking, well, I've got writing difficulties, perhaps I've got reading difficulties too. So how would I really know that what I have dictated is actually what I wanted uh, to say? So what I would be going back here, I'm going to go back to view and I'm going to put it into immersive reader mode so I can have it all read back out to me. I am going to demonstrate how I can use my voice to dictate all the thoughts in my head. I usually end up rating not very much because I get apprehensive about making spelling mistakes. OK, so I've listened to it back and I've realised I didn't actually want to say rating. I wanted to say writing. So I'm just going to go back in there at that point and make a manual correction there. And that's me done my bit of writing there. So I'm happy with that. Again, on the call website, we have lots of information about text-to-speech. So it comes under our information tab. And instead of the text-to-speech, we have got speech recognition there. So again, it explains a little bit about it, but it also shows you what's, what's possible um, using different applications and different devices. So this was the dictate one that I was showing you there, using it on... Uh, on Word Online. 
For someone with dyslexia, this use of speech recognition technology can make a huge difference to their self-esteem and in raising attainment. So uh, although it's easy to use, it does take a bit of thought and practice to get it to work effectively. And there's a booklet that I would recommend reading if, you, if you're trying to get started yourself or helping a pupil to get started with speech recognition. And it's this one here. It's called Speech Recognition as AT for Writing, AT being assistive technology. It's Daniel Cochran and Kelly Key. So it's on our website and it's free to download and it is really excellent and just in terms of um, how you would best get started with it. Because as I say, it's not, it, although it's easy to use um, and, and, and quick to learn, it's an easy tool. Um, there are there are certain uh, strategies that you should be using to, to make the best use of it, because remembering that every time you say am um, or um, that is definitely going to be picked up there. So that's on our website there under the speech recognition section. Another way in which the writing process can be made easier is the use of word prediction. My colleague Craig Mill has written a very good guide that can be downloaded free from our website. So that comes under our, scroll back up to the top here, and we look at downloads. And it's under books and reports. So I'm clicking on there just now. And it's the first one here, a guide to word prediction. So Craig's now going to give a demonstration of using word prediction to support writing difficulties. Hello and welcome to my section on word prediction. My name is Craig Mill and I'm the Assistive Technology Advisor at Cole Scotland. To get started, I would like just to briefly explain what word prediction is. And it's possible that you're already using word prediction by another name, uh, for example, on your phone, which is known as a predictive text. So if you would like to find out a bit more about um, word prediction, if you go to the dyslexia site, which you can see here is Skull Scotland Information and Dyslexia. And if we click on that, we have some information on different aspects of dyslexia for technology and writing. So uh, if we go into writing, and I've, I've got it actually just ready up here, as you scroll down, you'll find the, uh, the, the section that says word prediction. And there's some, gives you an overview of the features of word prediction. But otherwise, you could go to the word prediction if you want to know a bit more about it and look at different applications. But essentially, word prediction is where you sort of type the first character of a, a, of a word, so the first letter of a word, and the prediction software guesses um, uh, very cleverly, I should say, what it thinks that that word is going to be. So sometimes you could do ph phonetic spelling, for example, elephant with an F, and it will identify that. You can create topic dictionaries and uh, lots of other really good features, and I'll cover them in some um, de detail just now. So the first thing to think about is looking at how, looking at the built-in word prediction that we have in Word. So if you have Windows 10 and you have a, a, a a recent version of Word, then it's already available. And to find that, I'm just going to bring up a, a Word document from the bottom here. Uh, just find the, the document that I need. Uh, and this is called Show Tech Suggestions. So I'll show you where you can find it. So I'm just going to go down to my Windows uh, search box down at the bottom, and I'm typing in Show Tech Suggestions as I type. So this is what we're looking for, Show Tech Suggestions as I type. And if I click onto that, then that brings up the pane. OK, so there we go. So there's a typing. And what I want to turn on is just scroll down to the bottom and use the hardware keyboard. So assuming you've got a keyboard or a laptop which is uh, attached or just part of the laptop, we want to have the hardware keyboard and we turn that on. And then I'll just close that for just now. So here is a bit of text. I am learning about the pharaohs and some of those words are quite difficult. So if I start typing, now you can see what's happening just above the word, the letter I've typed is I've got some options. There's no text to speech or anything like that. It's very basic. But for example, we can maybe just see I am, okay, and we'll put the space in. 
and it does sort of guess what it think might might come next like next word prediction i am not sure not sure but we're wanting learning so we could just carry on typing or we could just click on to the word that we're that we're thinking about we want to do so i'm just really going to repeat that sentence that's over there that so so far these words haven't been too bad but i've got pharaohs now so pharaohs is going to be quite tricky for me to type but if i get uh, the first couple of so I've got three characters down and there's pharaohs in there quite nicely so let's see and um, and the so I've got and the so now I'm doing quite quite good actually with the uh, Egyptians um, Egyptians and there it is there so it would be really good if we had some sort of text-to-speech but unfortunately that's just not there so for um, my a school school project and there it is and I'll just pop that in and do that so of course we could use some of the things that we've that Shirley's been showing you some of the text to speech just to check that um, but I think that's quite a good one so just just to sort of uh, go back so that was text suggestions text suggestions as I type I want to switch it off now because I don't want to sort of interfere with the rest of my that I'm doing. So show text suggestions as I type and I scroll down and it's a hardware keyboard. You can see there I'm going to turn that off. So that's a very, very basic but free um, uh, piece of software that's built in that you can use to support writing. The next one I'm going to show you is a standalone program and it's called I'll just let you see the website for that. I'll just bring up the website. And this is called WordQ. So it's a, a kind of a standalone um, and its main job is just to do word prediction, but it has lots of other features built in. So now if I go back to my Word document and uh, I want to find the one um, that I've got, it's all set up. This is WordQ. OK, so here's um, some writing with lots of spelling mistakes in it. So let's see if a word queue will help me improve my spelling accuracy. So I have it just minimized down here. I just find it on, uh, here it is here. So this is word queue. It just appears as a floating toolbar in the document. Of course, it doesn't need to be word. It could be other text documents so for, or the internet, that sort of thing. And one thing it does have, for example, it actually has um, text to speech built in. So if I highlight the text, and click on that, it will read that back. I am very bad at spelling and sometimes I spell so bad I can't read my own writing. Okay, so lots of similar sounding spelling mistakes there that we might not necessarily pick up. So let's see how well we Prediction. can actually spell that. So in here, you see I've got the little icon here that says words. So when I click on that, I now have my little word prediction box appear. So let's see how well we can replicate with what's there. So I'm going to type in I and it's I, appeared right at the bottom. I, um, I am. Now, um, it's in the list, but if can, um, you can see, had, um, I can actually hear, hear it as I roll over. So that's a really good feature as well. So I'll just pop that um, in. I, now, very. So let's just type in very. Um, very. In fact, let's just try it with that bad spelling mistake that's in there. So even with that bad sort of phonetic sort of mistake, it still appears very. in there. And just to check, that is very nice. I can very. have that red bag. So very let's pop that much. in. So let's continue. Um, bad. I okay. So I've got three characters down and it's down at the bottom so i can just say that speed speed specific special speaking spending spelling so i could either click to put that Stuff. in or you see there's number so i can press number one and and sometimes 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 is in the list sometimes i so you can see it does make a big difference let's just finish off spiel i um Let's take that away so you can see it. Spiel. 
And even with that quite far off spell, it's, mistake, spell. it's picked spell. up quite, quite well. So I won't finish the whole sentence, but that just gives you a kind of an, an idea of uh, really how powerful yes. it is. Um, I'm going to just switch off just now and I'm going to go back to um, another document that I've got uh, set up for you. And so I'm going to go from there. And the one I'm wanting is topic dictionaries, because an important aspect of our work queue is that you can create topic dictionaries. So you can see here's quite a complicated uh, sentence with lots of specific words and names. And what I want to be able to do is somehow replicate that. So down at the bottom, uh, just clicking here, I have this thing called photosynthesis. So what I've done at an earlier time is I've collated a whole bunch of words that are related to photosynthesis and I've made a topic dictionary with them. So it's just a, a list of words that you import into WordQ and you create. And this is really just to cut out. So, you know, wh when you're predict when it's predicting words, it's just not grabbing words from anywhere. It's got specific words that it's going to be looking at. So let's get our um, speech on and our words and bring that. So we want first, first of all, is photosynthesis. Photo. So let's try, let's just go. Photo. Uh, right, so let's just go photo. So it did take a wee, bit of a long time to kick in, but there it is. Okay, photosynthesis. And photosynthesis. Can... Okay. Photosynthesis. And we want some other words in there, which is chloroplasts. So that's the first couple of characters and it's bang at the top. Chloroplast. Okay, so Chloroplast. Let's pop that in and chlorophyll. And there it is down at the bottom. Chlor so three characters Chlorophyll. and it's there. Uh, so we can then go back and then we can obviously we can have it right Photosynthesis back. takes place in the part of the plant cell containing chloroplasts. These are small structures that contain chlorophyll. And then we can read the, our own sentence that, we, that we've made there as well. So let's just switch. So, so that's um, WordQ, uh, great for word prediction, great for topic dictionaries and great for reading back information as well. And you can see very easy to use and quite non-intrusive as well. So that's that's really good. The third one I'm going to show you is uh, Clicker 8. So uh, let's just bring up Clicker. I've got it down here. So rather than just being a standalone Clicker 8, like many other programs, it, it's, it really uses lots of other tools and word prediction is just one part of it. But one of the really good features of, of uh, word prediction, I'll just quickly show you the, the website, just flick to the website uh, so you can see where it comes from. So that's the Crick software uh, that you can get it. And there's one for younger children and one for primary, Docs Plus, so Clicker and Docs Plus, and they both contain word prediction. Uh, so let's just bring up my Docs Plus, sorry, my Clicker program again. And the reason why I, I, I think this is a really good program for, for primary pupils is because in the prediction, it also support, supports uh, image support. So if I was to type in the, have you got, okay, so I want to see the, and what I'm wanting is the word, the woman, okay, the woman went to the cinema. And you can see here what we have is we actually have a bit of uh, image support. So the woman, and if I right click, women. I can also hear it. So this is really good. So I can, I can see the word, I can hear the word, and I have a picture representation of the word as well. So let's pop that in. The woman went, um, and also have some symbols. This is a symbol actually. Uh, picture library I've got in that doesn't always come that this is an added thing that I have in here for uh, working with people who maybe have more complex difficulties with reading. So uh, but it does come with its own basic uh, kind of library with lots of good pictures. So we want to see cinema. Oops, let's spell that right. Cinema and there it is. And put my full stop in. The women went to cinema. And it reads it back as well. So equally we can see the the boy, and there's the boy, uh, played, played, and uh, we've got that played, football, and there's a football in there too. The boy played football. So having used this with pupils who do have writing difficulties, with difficulties with um, literacy, with spelling, with grammar, it does make a big difference to, to the overall general support. 
Uh, so I hope you found this useful and if you'd like to know more about word prediction, please download the word prediction guide and don't hesitate to get in contact if you'd like more information. OK, so thanks and I'll hand over to Shirley now. Thank you. Bye. What would you do for reading and writing support if you were using an iPad? Let's have a look at the same website on the Romans we were looking at on the laptop. So I'm just clicking on the Safari browser. Here's the same website here. There are built-in options that can make the reading of this website easier. And the first thing I'm going to do is clear out the clutter. We've got the sidebars, we've got text in little sub boxes there, um, and we've got the icons at the top. And I want to make that just a little bit clearer to read. So you can see in the address bar at the top of the screen there, on the left-hand side, there's a small A and a large A. Well, I'm just going to tap on that, and that will give me the option to show reader view. So if I click on that, you can see how so much clearer that is, having everything cleared out. There's built-in options that can make the text read out. So that would be using speak screen and speak selection. And that's a one-time switch on and setting. So let me just do that just now so you're exactly clear where that would happen. So I'm looking at the settings cog here, tapping on that, and down on the left-hand side, I'm going to go to accessibility. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to click on spoken content. And you can see the top two are, are toggled on there. So speak selection, um, and speak screen, which will allow the whole screen to be read out. And I've also got highlight content switched on there. And you, when, I, when I demonstrate it, you'll see how, it, how effective that is to support the reading. I could put the speech controller on or not at the moment, but that's just another option for having the screen uh, read out to you there. So let's go back to our website. We've got the Reader view enabled, so I've got my nice clear interface here. Now, all I have to do in order to have the text read out to me, I'm thinking of the option Speak Selection, which will uh, give me a selected piece of text read out. So I'm just going to put my finger down on a particular word, and I'm going to drag out the bar here. And then you'll see I have the option to click on Speak. The Romans invaded other countries too. That speech selection. So it could be just for a word, could be for a phrase or for a larger piece of text. But if you did want the whole screen read out to you, what you're best to do is switch on the speak screen option, which is activated by a two finger sort of flick down from the top of the screen. Facts about Romans for kids. Roman Britain homework help Roman army the Italian flag Romans came to. English flag Britain nearly 2,000 years ago and changed our country. Even today, evidence of the Romans being here can be seen in the ruins of Roman buildings, forts, roads, and baths can be found all over Britain. So that's where you can see the highlighting coming into effect because as you're seeing, as you're listening to the words, you're seeing them being highlighted as they go along, and that's really effective there. I could have the option on this little bar here to change the speed of the voice and within settings back in the settings cog I can actually change which voice is is being used to read it out so important to have everything just at the right speed and a voice that's that, that's preferable to the user so I might be writing some notes while looking at a website and there's a useful feature on the iPad that you can use which I'm just going to demo so I'm going to go into my notes app clicking on the pencil the square on the top right hand will give me a new note there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to click on full screen with a double arrow. And then this is where I'm going to be able to type up a few notes. But I'm wanting to look at the web page at the same time. So I'm going to go and flick up from the bottom of the screen. And I see the Safari browser icon. So I'm just going to put my finger down on that and I'm going to drag it up and click it on the right hand side of the screen and that will dock the website there. So I'm writing on the left hand side of the screen and I'm looking at the text on the website on the other one. So that's really good. So what I can actually do here is I can actually just again finger down on the text, drag it out 
um, I can have it spoken out to me or I can actually just put my finger down in it and I'm able to just drag it over into the notes column. You can see the green plus there. I'm not actually having to tap on that. I just lift my fingers and the text is now in the notes app. So what I can do now is I can flick down with two fingers from the left hand side of the screen and have the notes read out to me. The Romans invaded other countries too. Or I can flick down from the right hand side of the screen and have the web page read out to me. Written nearly 2000 years ago and changed our country. Even today, evidence of the Romans being here. So you can see how useful that is for productivity when you're creating notes on one side and using the website at the same time. And on both sides, you can use that uh, text to speech uh, functionality there. So let me just show you that again, because it's quite a good one to be able to know how to do. And uh, sometimes I'd maybe just run through that a little bit quickly. So I'm in my notes app at the moment. I'm going to make it full screen. And then I'm flicking up from the bottom. The compass icon is your Safari browser. I've just got my finger down on that and docking it on the right hand side and now I've got the website there on the right hand side and I've got my notes app here. So remembering I can just put my finger down on some text, highlight it, keep my finger down on it and I'm able to add it into the notes there. You can also do this for pictures, so that's quite useful as well. Here's a map here. I'm just going to put my finger down on it and you can see I'm dragging over there. So that's your split screen functionality on the iPad. I've got my notes app and I'm using the website on the right hand side there. So it's so important that we can get text digitally so that pupils with reading difficulties can read it out. But what happens when we do come across text on paper? It could be a worksheet, it could be a magazine article, it could be a menu in a restaurant or an important letter. What, what would you do to, have, to be able to have that read out? Well, there are a couple of scanning apps that I'm going to talk about. And the first one I'm going to show you is one called Seeing AI. So it's using the built-in camera feature on the iPad. Um, and I'll show you exactly what that does. So Seeing AI. Is this app here? And what it's actually doing is using using no edges visible. I'm going to click on short text. Short text. Way to get to know more by B. A trio of apps. Apps have a huge role to play in making information more accessible on smartphones and mobile devices. So what I'm really doing there is I've got this magazine article and I'm really just hovering the camera over the text and it's reading it out to me in real time. So that could be really useful, especially just the kind of on the fly reading of some text on paper. If I go to the document option, the second one along, um, it will take a picture of the whole page. So let me give that a go. Just document. Now. Hold steady. Processing. So what it's done now, it's taken a picture of the page and if I go to the bottom left of the screen, I've got a play arrow. So it's done the optical character recognition, tapping on play, and it will read it out to me. Body, font family, Arial, font size, 12 points. Scotland's Nature, our first app, offers a detailed insight into Scotland's most iconic landscapes and species using a range. And reading it out so for the most part it will get every word depending on the accuracy of your if, if you have slightly shaky hand it, it might not take an exact picture but that's such a useful uh, tool it's a free app it's on the i it, I put it on my ipad and it's using the built-in camera so it's a really useful one to 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 know about and if we look at our app wheel right so this is our ipad apps for learners with dyslexia reading writing difficulties You'll see in the section we've got on reading, we have a section, subsection on scanning. So there's the Seeing AI app that I have just demonstrated. And Office Lens above it, that's another really good one because of the way it integrates into Office 365 applications. So two really good ones there to know. Is it possible to use speech recognition on the iPad? Yes, again, it's another feature that's built in and it's called Siri. 
So I'm just going to open a Word document here, Word using the Word app. I'll make the text a little bit bigger so that we can see it clearly. So you see I've got my cursor on the page there and the keyboard has automatically come up. Well, at the, on the left of the space bar on the keybar, keyboard, I've got a microphone icon. So all I have to do is click on the microphone and start speaking. And hopefully it will pick up my voice and start typing out the words. So let's give that a go. I can dictate my notes just by speaking using the internal microphone on the iPad, full stop. I find this an incredibly assistive tool, full stop. Surrey does require an internet connection to work, full stop. And there you have it, it's worked really well. I did have to speak the punctuation. Um, it, I can check whether exactly what I've said has, ha, has come out, just by I can have the text read out to me. I'm just going to put my finger down on the word, select, And then I have my option to speak. I can dictate my notes just by speaking using the internal microphone on the iPad. I find this an incredibly assistive too. Siri does require an internet connection to work. Okay, so it picked up uh, two. I know I want to say two, so I'm just going to do a manual edit at that point. These are some of the tools that are built in on the iPad to support reading and writing difficulties. I hope you find this workshop really useful and you have a greater awareness of how technology can support somebody with dyslexia. As I can't take any questions at this time, I want to share with you our contact details so you can get in touch. We're running a 90 minute online learning workshop on the 5th of November, which may be useful for some of you to sign up. We also have other professional learning opportunities and we can provide bespoke online learning workshops to any school or organisation and I would be very happy to discuss your training requirements and get a session booked in the diary. Thank you very much for logging in and listening today.